Welcome back to another Reading and Correcting with me, Kendar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you are looking to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today we are doing chapter 11 of Demons. I feel good. It's been a few days since I killed the last demon, and I've spent my time doing tests and training. Juliet left another message, but I deleted it without listening. I still feel fear at the idea of confronting the demon again, but I don't let it paralyze me. I make it, I make it drive me to train. I push myself when I fight the, the robot, setting them to react faster. I increase the weight for the exercises. I spend time in the shooting range and practice reloading my revolver as quickly as I can, both with loaders and, with, and bullet by bullet. I want to be at my best the next time I meet it. I am doing a reflex test for Noah, one of the scientists, when the, calls, the call comes. The test consists of me in a cylinder four feet in diameter with spikes judging, jutting out at random interval, speeding up the longer I am here. The goal is to avoid getting something vital pierced for as long as possible. I've been in it for an hour. The spikes no, now come out every second, one out before the previous one has fully retracted. I have dozens of cuts, but they are only skin deep. The click comes, the locking mechanism for the spikes. I know why. The only thing that can interrupt the test is a sighting. Derek, the old man says, opening the door to the cylinder. You're needed in the field. I nod and take the towel. I wipe the blood off, leaving my skin unmarred. The cuts have already healed. I step by my room to change, then head for the hangar. I arm myself, the revolvers, with extra loaders, two swords, the hatchet. For a moment, I consider taking more weapons. I worry that if I encounter the demon, what I already have won't be enough, that it will be able to tear me apart even with them. I recognize it as the fear speaking. It tries to send my mind down a spiral of doubt. I force it down. I am a hunter. I can defeat any demon with a sword and my guns. Anyway, over-encumbering myself with weapons would hinder my movement. I put the trench coat on. Where was the sighting? I ask, sitting down in the chair. The medic places the sensors on me. I don't know him, although I've seen him before. He was one of Jason's poker friend. His blush tells me he realizes I have seen him wearing almost nothing. The woman in the passenger seat looks over her shoulder as the van starts moving. Calborn Industrial Sector. The call came in. Came from a passerby. We saw the demon breaking into one of the warehouses there. It might just have been... It might just have reached a point where it settles down and makes a nest. I don't get why they always end up doing that, the driver says. They eat their victims on the spot. What's the point of having something to go back to? They're demons. They aren't supposed to make sense, the passenger replies. I tune them out. Demons make nests because they, when they get smart enough, they no longer kill everyone they, they encounter. A nest means it's getting ready to taint humans to get to them to work for it. If I don't stop it, it will mean a, few, a new focal point for crime in the city. Tainted, the humans will attack the other humans. They will steal and kidnap. The demon will no longer need it to leave its nest. Its agent will bring the food to it. Could be that demon, I think. And I sense the medic's gaze on me as my heartbeat increases for a moment. I force it back to normal. I will not let the thought of it, in unnerv of it unnerve me. If this is it, I will fight it, and I will kill it, or it will kill me. I will not give in to the fear. I am a hunter. We're here, the driver says, bringing the van to a stop and turning in the inner seat. The caller didn't say which warehouse it went in, so you'll have to go through all of them. She's new. I don't need to search them. I will, have, I will be able to go directly to the one it's hiding in. I step out of the van and walk to the buildings. I catch the scent on, at the fourth warehouse, and I freeze for a moment. It's that demon scent. I want to run in the opposite direction, but I don't let myself move. I do not give in to the fear, even if it's stronger now that I have confirmed its scent. I will face it. I will fight it with all my might. If I die, it will not be because fear overwhelmed me.
I follow the scent. It did not go into this building. It moved past it as well as the next two. On the next one, the door is open. The chain that kept it closed ripped off. I hesitate. This is not an accident. The path it kept, it walked, kept it out of sight, but here it's exposed. It could have entered from any other location. It wanted to be seen. It wants me here. I look through the open door. It's well lit due to the large window letting in the light in spite of being dirty. The floor is littered with debris and large containers. Debris and large containers, metal and a few wooden. It could be hiding behind them, but I know it isn't. I look up. It's standing on the scaffolding, staring at me. I take out a revolver and empty it at it as I enter. I open the cylinder and reload it in one motion. If I've hit it, it shows no sign. I keep my aim on it as, I, as it steps off the beam, landing 20 feet from me. I do not want to fight you, it growls. Sure, I fire at it, but it's moving before the hammer goes down. The corner of the wooden crate behind it explodes, adding fragments to the debris on the floor. I try to follow it, but it's fast, so much quicker than any I've fought before. It's a blur, making it its form difficult to target. I empty the revolver, reload it, and pull out the other one. I stop trying to hit it while it runs. I track it and wait. It stops, and I fire once with each gun. It's no longer there, the bullets clanging against the metal container. This isn't working. It's playing its, I'm playing its game while I need to get it to play mine. I lower my arm and close my eyes. I ignore the fear still at a low simmer, telling me this, I'll never win this. I'll listen to it move. The claws on its feet click ever so lightly on the concrete floor. It stops 30 feet to my right. I don't move. It takes a step toward me, slowly, tentatively, tentatively, then another and another, more confident. I start pulling the trigger before my arm moves. I've aimed at it and I'm firing before it can react. I continue shooting and bring up the other, re the other revolver. I can't tell if I'm hitting it. Its form shifts around it. Shifts around and the blast bullet makes a large hole in its side. It roars and for a moment I can see through the hole, but the hole, then it closes. How can it heal this quickly from an irradi irradiated wound? Something comes at me. I duck, but it hits my hand. The revolver flies out of it. I strain it, but it's before me. It hits me in the chest, and I fly back through a wooden crate. I land and slide until I hit the corrugated wall. Corrugated wall. Why did it hit me with the palm of its hand and not the claws? I stand and it pushes me against the wall, hand around my neck. I do not wish to fight you. Its eyes are bright red. There's the anger that was missing the other day. Too bad. I'm going to kill you. I raise my feet and kick it in the stomach with all my strength. It flies back, leaving scratches on my neck from its claws. I fall to my back and I'm up again, unfolding a sword. What are you? It asks, getting up. I'm a... I'm a hunter. I'm a killer of demon, I growl back. No, what are you? I see it search, searching for a moment. What is your name? I frown. What do you care? Why does it want my name? Can't it just kill me like all demons do? Can't it just try to kill me like all demon do? demons do? It straightens. I am claws in the dark. Fine, I roll my arc. I'm Derek. Surprise registers in its eyes. Then it's mouthing my name. Then it mouths my name. It isn't happy with it. That's an ugly human name. You deserve better. Like, I care what you think. What do you want? A desire to talk. To understand you. Right. You want to understand me. I don't believe you. It tilts its head to the side. Why do you not believe me? I can't help the laughter. You're kidding, right? The question seems to confuse it. You're a demon. You wouldn't know how to tell the truth if your life depended on it. He ponders for a moment. Why do you say that? Because that's the truth. How do you know it is such? They told me. They, it looks around. Humans, 
Yes, humans. Demon lies, humans don't. Demons are bad, humans are good. That's why your kind keeps trying to kill them. Humans do bad things, it says. Only when they fall under a demon's influence, when they become tainted by one. It nods. I understand. You believe it is so because humans have told you. Told me? I've seen it happen. I've had to kill humans who were tainted. It had been horrible. I thought Amanda would replace me after that, but she told me it had been the right thing to do. They were tainted. No longer humans anymore. No longer human anymore. It studies me for a moment. I see it move this time. I know it's about to rush me, and, I'm re and I ready myself for it. I feel the blade bite into its flesh as it gets close, but it doesn't hit me. It changes direction, pulling the sword out of my hand and me off balance. I take out the, I take, I take the other sword and run after it. It jumps over a container and and breaking sounds come behind it. I round it to see broken plywood over a hole. I follow it down there. There is no light, and my thermal vision doesn't do me much good here. But I have it sent, at least for the few hundred feet. Then I, realize I reach a zone with hundreds of other demons sent. I try to pick it out of the other, but I can't. I curse. I've lost it. I didn't prove myself. <clears throat> I let it escape. <clears throat> I will not be able to find it down here. My phone has no signal. So I head back to the warehouse. I have to tell Amanda and Jason about it. What Amanda will do to me as a consequence no longer matters. They have to know. And this concludes chapter 11 of Demons. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the story, as well as the other books in the series, in the series, it is, the, it is available on Kindle Unlimited. If you want a different way to support me, that is on my Patreon, where you can also get access to just about everything else I've written. And if you are looking to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m., Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the notes, and with that, I shall wish you a good day.